Now guys, I'm back from Extreme Auto Caravan Camping again here. Just going to touch base on the um, second part of the vehicle to caravan interface system. So, the modification on this setup is a DC charger in the vehicle. Now, a lot of people do it because they've got a second battery under the bonnet, in the back, wherever. Um, having a DC charger in a vehicle doesn't necessarily mean um, the caravan has to have one. Um, you know, you can benefit from it, of course, but the system would be wired up differently to this. But this system here is a simple upgrade from a standard isolator to a um, DC charger. So, generally, the size of your charger should be about 10% minimum of your battery capacity. So, 200 amp hours, 20 amp charger, you know, thereabouts. Um, bigger the better. So, the way it works is, DC charger is an isolator as well. So, as the voltage rises, it'll turn on, and spit out the charger you've programmed it for. So in this case, we just work with AGMs. So 14.4 volts. So main battery comes into the DC charger. There's another Anderson plug there, and there's another Anderson plug there. They're the same. They're on the same line. So one input, two outputs. Now, this Anderson plug here could be in the back of the vehicle, could be wherever. Point is, that's an aux battery. So if that's charging, if that's charging a battery here, that's charging a battery on, the, on that line there, right, 14.4 volts coming through, this line is the same. So that voltage is going to be replicated at this point. The power is going to go that way. Now, this is where it gets interesting. As long as the gauge of the cable is thick enough on this point, and here, and this is done all properly, then that voltage, the voltage drop between this DC charge and here will be very minimal. Yes, if you read the book, it'll say the DC charger needs to be installed as close as possible to the charging battery. That is true. However, if the gauge of the cable is sufficient enough to handle the amperage, then it's fine. You won't get a volt drop. And we've done it hundreds of times and it's completely fine. So, DC charger in the back of a vehicle, let's say a you know, 200 series Land Cruiser, you've got a DC charger in the back, got another battery in the back under a wing. That's charging that battery. Your Anderson plug, your grey one, not your red, your grey, is off of that, essentially off the same battery. So that way, whatever's happening to that battery in the back of the cruiser is replicated there, which when you plug in is there, which is there. And you know, if you've got monitoring systems, you'll see the amperage flow in. So, um, easy system. It's a very small modification to the standard system with the isolator, except now we've just taken the isolator out and replaced it with a DC charger. So this is a great way to get a charge into your system. If you've got an aux battery in the vehicle, um, and you want to charge your van as well. And as you can see, there's still no crossover between the three-way fridge line. It's all separate. You know, this is DC charger is essentially charging two batteries when plugged in, one when you unhitch. And the red is always taking care of the fridge, still has nothing to do with the charging of the batteries. And this is how it's done properly. Um, what I have seen a lot, a lot, <laughs> and it tends to work now then, but you'll find it'll actually overcharge the battery and kill the DC charger because the DC charger is always running flat out. Is what people will do is, this is a massive no-no, is they'll have this off the battery, right? And then they'll put a DC charger here. Now that's like a monster no-no. So forget the red Anderson line, and even worse, we'll get into this. So this system never works. I'll show you why. This system doesn't work for a main reason of supply problem. So, you can see it. The red Anderson system is no longer, bought, no, no longer there. You've got a grey Anderson plug coming from a battery that's receiving a DC charge at, I don't know, let's call it a 25 amp charge. Right? If you've got 25 amps, let's get this. Just call it a single Anderson plug system. So, this system is common. I've seen this on heaps of cars um, all the time. So, let's call that a 25 amp DC charger. 25 amps, right? Easy. 25 amps is being pumped into this battery, bulk. That's in bulk, right? So, voltage is on its way up, cool. That Anderson plug's on that line. Here's where it gets funny. So, you plug that into there. The maximum that this can supply is 25 amps. On the input side, it's actually slightly higher. 
you know, for efficiency. So it's nearly 30 amps. You're not 100% efficient, pretty close. Anyway, 25 amps is going into that battery. Now, let's say this DC charger you fit in the van is a, oh, another 25 amp charger. So we'll call that 25 amp. Now, remember what I said about the input? To create 25 amps, it uses slightly more power on the input side. Like I said, it's close to 30. So if your demand on this point is 30 amps, which is here, that means you're pulling 30, or potentially pulling 30 amps out of this system. Now, you're pulling 30 amps from a battery that's receiving a 25 amp charge. We all know what's going to happen. So, this system never works because you get a DC charger charging a battery that's running an air supply that's feeding a DC charger that's charging a battery. Never works. Never works. The demand here is greater than what this can even supply. So, the voltage on this will come down, this will shut down, this DC charger, that won't charge. Happens all the time. So, that's a big, it's a big no from Matt. Um, and to boot, <laughs> to boot, You've got a three-way fridge sucking, you know, 17 plus 17 amps out of that line. So this poor DC charger is trying to charge this. This is just, it just doesn't work. <laughs> and if you, when you draw it out like this um, and lay it out for people to see, it just makes more sense. Um, and the numbers don't lie. You cannot hide the fact from numbers at the certain points. And then you've got transfer of energy in between these numbers. So. And that's the key, that's where plugs and interface come into and connections as well, fuses. So good quality components is what matters because your objective is to get power from point A to point B without any problem. So have a look over your systems, make sure they're perfect, make sure they're correct and make sure they're right because um, you don't want to hit the road and run into issues what well, keeps me busy anyway, so yeah, make sure all your systems are up to spec and hit me up for some comments.